Hey guys, hello, welcome on a brand new YouTube channel called The Butcher. Who's The Butcher? Well, that's me. And more about me, my chess and coaching achievements, you can find on YouTube homepage. First of all, I want to tell you what is this channel going to be about. It is going to feature all kind of uh, chess openings and mainly in the beginning, these first couple of videos and lectures are going to be for players ranged from 11 to 1700. So I'm going to start showing you and teaching you how to play with the white pieces. Your first move e4, and that's meant to be the first move for most of beginners because it leads to an open and very interesting game with a lot of creativity. So after e4, what's going to happen if your opponents uh, play e5. Then, of course, you will have to develop your knight, develop peace, attack the pawn on e5, and from this point onwards, uh, these lectures are going to divide in a couple of, uh, I believe, six lectures, uh, where we're going to cover just six different moves. Just like I told you previously, every lesson will uh, cover one of these variations. Uh, today's subject is f6 uh, variation, it's called Damiano's defense. Well, Damiano certainly wasn't like one of the best players uh, when he did this move. It's obviously not a good developing move. Uh, he doesn't develop his knight or bishop, he actually uh, just defends his pawn with the pawn, but also uh, weakening like lots of light squares around the king. So you're not supposed to play like that in your games. Uh, from now on, I'm always going to uh, ask you, okay, stop your video and try to find, uh, for example, in concrete puzzle or diagram, correct move. So let's stop here, stop your video and try to ask yourself, what did you use to play against players who in the past went for this Damiano's defense. Well, if you stop the video, uh, now I can come up with solution. If you, you played bishop c4 or went for d4, you certainly didn't make mistake because with d4, you're just, you just have like both of your bishops open, you attack the center, you fight for the center. By the way, we all, all the time called the tight center d4 d5 and e4 e5 squares you can develop afterwards your knight develop your bishop so this d4 move should be good if you uh, played bishop c4 that was also a great move because you just develop your piece prepare yourself for the castle and also uh, put your bishop on the open diagonal trying to take advantage of the potentially weak light squares so after f6 and this move that actually enters into Damiano's defense, believe it or not, this position is already almost lost for black. I'm gonna show you one of the main variations of this video, one of my game that I played in a rapid tournament against a guy from France, and believe it or not, he was an FM. Somebody would wonder how an FM could play such a bad variation, well, probably he either wanted to underestimate me or just to surprise me with such a bad opening choice. After f6, believe it or not, you should be going for the knight sack. So knight takes e5. So uh, we're not supposed to give up our knight for a pawn, usually in openings and in chess overall, but basically in this variation, it almost leads to winning game. After knight e5, you're threatening queen h5, and you just want to uh, almost make the king on e8. So what's going to happen if they just play something, for example, stupid like knight c6? You go for queen h5, g6, and once again, stop your video and find tactics. So the move for white should be knight takes g6. A very nice and typical tactics in these positions. What is this knight g6 doing about? 
So we're just attacking the Rukun AJ and they can't stop it. They can't defend it. So basically, if they take here, uh, our queen takes on a8, we're up an exchange, knight on g8 is hanging, and the rest should be like matter of your technique. So after knight e5, uh, you're obviously threatening queen h5 check, either mating your opponent or winning at least an exchange. So after knight e5, probably the most logical reaction by black is f takes e5. Once again, stop the video and ask yourself, how would you carry on from this point onwards? Well, you just have to go with queen h5, it's check, and you attack this king. They have to play king e7. In case they go with g6, we once again have one very typical tactical pattern that is called double attack. You give check to the king on e8 and you attack the rook on h8. Next move will be queen h8 for sure by white and you just win your game. After a queen h5 check, they have to play king e7. And you're down a piece. You just have to be sure to conduct your attack pretty precisely in order to win this game without mistake. So queen takes e5. Now you have two pawns for the given piece. Uh, they also have a weak king, but it's nothing. If you play this inaccurately, you can lose your game very easily. So it's very important to remember the next couple of moves to understand them. I always say, do not remember them day by heart, but try to understand why do you do that. So you go with the bishop c4 check. If the king goes to g6, you give check, king goes to h6, and how can we raise the attack and actually storm all our pieces against this king? Just play d4. d4 attacks the king on h6. They have to cover. They only have one move. It's g5. And you play h4. You open up your bishop on c1. Your rook on h1. You threaten bishop g5. You threaten h takes g5 followed by queen f7 checkmate. Position is completely lost. You can have fun at home checking this video or just putting this bishop on, you know, like over the board and setting your pieces like this and trying to find like defense for black. But there is no defense. Don't worry about that. So when you give queen h5 check and they go king e7 and you give, go with a queen e5, king f7, bishop c4, they have to play d5. What's so strong about this move d5? Well, They've just opened the light square bishop on c8 covering the f5 square. Why is that so important? Because when you play bishop takes d5, king g6, now you do not have queen f5 check like in previous line. Still, position is completely winning. Variation is refuted and you just have to know how. So you play h4, threatening h5, going after this king on uh, g6 and once again threatening in two moves mate h5, king h6, d4, and the mate will happen in like a couple of moves there. So after h4, if they play h5, this is a critical moment. They're just making some kind of shelter on h7. So if you give, I don't know, somehow check on g3 or play uh, anything else, they will put there and hide that king on h7. Once again, let's stop the video and try to find move for white. Uh, believe it or not, white is winning with a very nice uh, tactical opportunity, bishop b7. What's so strong about this bishop e7? Well, if bishop takes on b7, they don't have any more control of the f5 square. And basically, your queen can go there now, king can only escape on h6, you play d4 with a tempi, opening the h6 bishop and checking this king. And when they play g5, you play bishop g5, winning the queen. And most likely afterwards, even mating your opponent without much troubles. So just like you see, when you play h4, whether they play h6 or whether they play h5, you have a very nice tactical trick with the bishop b7. Once I played a bullet game, my opponent went for bishop d6, 
hoping that I'm going to uh, that I was going to remove my Quinn from the fifth rank, where I wouldn't be able to check on f5 anymore once they capture in b7. But of course, you have Queen a5 keeping the Quinn on the fifth rank, and whenever they take on b7, you just remain or actually retain the possibility of giving check and going with the d4, winning the queen and almost meeting the king on h6. Just because of this, after knight takes e5, believe it or not, they have to play only one move. Otherwise, they're just lost. I'll repeat just this conclusion for you and to make it easier. If they play knight anything but f takes e5 or queen e7, you will go with queen h5 and at least win an exchange and in some variations even go with the mate of your opponent. If they go with f takes e5, you just go with check and in case of g6, you will win after this double attack and check rook on h8 or if king e7, you have more or less force line where you almost made the king on f7. Don't forget about these tricks. And by the way, this is exactly what I'm intending to do is the, in these videos and lectures. Uh, to teach you typical tactical positions, patterns, and focal points. That's what you have to learn out of these videos. And that's why I'm always going to tell you, uh, you know, like before important positions, stop the video, pause the video, and try to find the move on your own. That's like very important. So after knight f3, e6, knight e5, they only can play queen e7. And once again, I have to repeat, Damiano's defense is probably the worst choice uh, of all these side lines by black. But you have to know how to win and how to play against it. Many times when I give this position to my students previously, explaining them how to play against the queen e7, they go for queen h5. Please, the butcher is begging you, do not make mistake ever. Once again, pause the video and try to find the winning combination or the winning defense for black. So let's go. Believe it or not, black is winning. It's not the same position like previous, previously, because when they play g6, and it's a great defensive resource by black, when you take on g6, they have queen e4 check and they have a double attack. King on e1 and knight on g6. One of the basic and most common mistake by uh, white players. Do not ever make it. Butcher is warning you. So after like knight f3, queen e4. Uh, usually they go for the pawn back and that's how they generally speaking, have to play in this position. If they play d5, you're just going to defend this pawn with d3, open the dark square bishop, and when they take the center, you once again do the bishop e2, followed by short castle, knight c3, where the dark square bishop is already open. Position is almost winning for white in terms of great development and great activity of the white pieces. If they go with knight f3, queen e4, you will just go with bishop e2. Don't forget, right now I'm showing you my game against FM from France played uh, in rapid tournament. Uh, by the way, uh, we just both had like 15 minutes per player without increment. So after bishop e2, my opponent went for d5. Whether they go for d5, knight c6 or anything else, you just have to complete your development, make short castle, Play knight c3 and for the rest of this game, play like rookie one uh, where you just want to take advantage and take use of the potentially weak queen on the e file and the bad king on e8. So after you play bishop e2, uh, my opponent went for d5. I just made castle, uh, placing my king into safety and I was threatening and I was hoping that I could go with a rookie one. Uh, followed by bishop b5 discover check where I would win the queen. He played correct move knight e7, covering his king and at least making it a little bit safer. I played rookie one. Very nasty 
a tactical trap where I where I just want to go with the bishop b5. Bishop b5 discovered check. I could have gone with the diagram and puzzle here for you as well. But of course, don't forget to use this against your opponents. It's a very hidden trap. So you go with rook e1. Nobody fills the real threat, but the threat is bishop b5 winning the queen. They, uh, my opponent went for knight bc6. And you know what? When you play your games, try to play according to basic chess rules. It's called, actually, I developed that rule on my own and explained to all my students. Cat rule, centralization, activity, and development. All your moves have to be centralizing. They have to take, a, they got to take care about the center. They have to be very active. You're, you don't want to play on the edge of the board. You want to play in the center. And they have to be developing. That's why I played d4. Uh, I just, I've just opened my dark square bishop. And I was fighting for the center. But also I was preparing my knight to go into the game with the knight c3. When he played bishop g4, I went for knight c3. Queen f5. And I played h3. Uh, I just wanted to warn my opponent, hey man, please, commit yourself, decide whether you want to keep this bishop on h5 and go for some craziness if I make mistake and play g4, uh, making my king possibly weak, or you want to take it. My opponent played bishop h5. I was just hoping throughout the game that uh, he was going to take on f3, bishop takes f3, and after that, if long castle... Bishop goes on g4, doing this queen trap. After bishop g4, I would have won the queen. And at least, in the worst case scenario, I would at least win the bishop pair. My opponent played the bishop h5, and I didn't want to go with g4. Because g4 would give my opponent at least some chances against my king. After bishop h5, I played knight b5. Once again, very nice trick. I want to go with knight c7, and I want to do the four. After knight b5, I threaten knight c7 fork, winning the rook. He played the most logical long castle. I said, okay, no big deal. Let me just open up my rook on e1 and uh, rook on e1 and threaten the queen on f5. My opponent worked for queen d7. And of course, what do you have to do in the openings? You just have to complete your development. And of course, the best way to do that in this specific position is placing the bishop on f4. Bishop f4 just threatens the pawn c7 and also after we play bishop f4 uh, we we want to choose whether we want to take on c7 by knight or by bishop by the way uh, white has just completed his development and wants to go for the rest of this game with uh, most likely queen side attack my opponent went for a6 he couldn't find a better way to defend this queen side I took on c7, and he played knight g6, threatening my bishop, and probably uh, hoping for a bishop d6, where in the worst case scenario, he'd be able to at least carry on fighting very hard till I crush him eventually. But believe it or not, once again, you gotta stop the video and find what Butcher did in this position. I made the move. And I won the game on the spot. So I hope you found it. I played knight a8. Can you imagine? I put the knight, I put the knight on the angle of the board, and I was threatening knight b6 checkmate. What a nice like marvelous mating picture. But also in like the worst case scenario, if he takes on f4, I'd be able to come up with knight b6 for where I just win the queen. My opponent resigned, and that's how I won the game. I hope you like this first lecture about crushing uh, Damiano's defense. I hope you like all these variations. Generally, I hope that you're gonna like the content on this channel, 
And of course, come up with your uh, comments, your feedback, and hopefully your donations, because we just need to raise this channel and to make it better. Can't wait to make the next video. And it's going to be about the McConnell defense, where you play uh, at second move knight f3, and they play queen f6. Thank you so much for watching, and hope you enjoyed.